Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. Mm. We be on fire, we be lit lit. lit. Mm. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad walk on. Hey, man, we got a special guest today. But first of all, let me just say, man, we here, man, we over in. uh. Las Vegas. Las Vegas, wow. Nevada. Man, how did we make it here, huh? Right, we man. Took the God. Oh man, that's <laughs> only God, man. Mm-hmm. Check it, man. Hey, man. Say, man, we here with Mr. Clint Sand. Mr. Clint Mr. Sand. Mr. Payback. Mr. Mr. Pay- payback. You call me Payback for sure. Man, so man, how you doing, man? Man, I'm blessed and highly flavored, man. Man, so. Hey, I got to know where the payback come from. Mr. Payback. He must have owed payback. somebody and paid him yes. back. You know, I'm from LA, South Central. Um, we had the racial profiling with the cops just pull you over for anything and whatever and be just super disrespectful mm-hmm. got pulled over mistaken identity guns drawn out the felony take down the whole get down and then after they um, we went the person they were looking for you expect a, we ain't got handcuffs you think they always sorry you no you person. don't even hear that you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying mm-hmm. they said sit on the ground made us sit on the car we on the freeway Helicopter, we stopped traffic the whole get down. It looked like a movie. And then he went, I was the last one in line. And he was like, yeah, you in a gang? He asking they, all of us, right? At the time. Like this, if you were in a game, you're going to say, yeah, I'm in a gang. Right. But if you saw us, you know what I'm saying? We all musicians. We look like you pulling over the revolution. You know what I'm saying? Like Prince and the Revolution. Yeah, yeah. You're like you pulling a bunch of weirdos over. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and so he went down the line asking you in a gang. You got a nickname. Blah, 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 blah. He got to me. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, no, I ain't no damn, you know, darn game. You mm-hmm. guess on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah I slip yeah. up, you know what I'm no, saying? That's fine, me. that's fine. You know what I'm saying? I, I, bilingual, I go mm-hmm. from English <laughs> to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ricky Ricardo. But, but, you know, everything that you're saying, it reminds me of Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton, exactly. That's, that's what's that's going what on. That's what it reminded me, when they pulled them over and judging that's, them and stuff like that. That's the era, that's the time. Okay. It was 1990 when it happened to me. Oh, and okay. so he got down to me. He was like, "You in the gang? I don't no damn gang." He said, "Reach for my shirt, see if I got a tattoo." I was like, "I ain't got no damn tattoo." You got a nickname. So at the time, you know, my dad's a lawyer, and my mom worked for the city. She know right, all the little right. Congress people, and mayors. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this fool in trouble, whatever. So he said, "You got a nickname." Wasn't he a white guy? He was a white guy, of course. Okay. See, but it don't matter. Cops. But they have black eyes, but it don't matter. And okay. so it was the same day America's Most Wanted came out. Oh. So the first line Ice Cube say is, I heard Payback's a motherfucking nigga. Right. So I heard Payback. So when he asked me, what's my nigga? Man, I said Payback. But I meant it like I'm going to pay you back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you Did you ever back. pay them back? Did you ever get them in trouble? Hell no. That, it, so you ain't no you, real payback then? No, nah, me and Pops, I told Pops, he, he used to be the civil rights dude with the shotgun. He a fool. Right? Okay. And so we went down to the police station. You got to file at least five complaints against a cop before Internal Affairs even looks at him. Mm-hmm. So we went down there and had the gangster to get the um, complaint going. Mm. My dad's a lawyer. They try to run the game on us. And, oh, who are you? Let me investigate your son. We ain't going to give you nothing, blah, blah, blah. My dad ran the code on him. No, on the code, blah, 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 blah. You're in cuff. Mm-hmm. He realized Pops was a lawyer and he gave it to us. Mm. He that complaint. That was it. I never heard back. They never called me in for nothing, nothing. Nothing that happens to them, uh, you know. I, I never knew that, that you have to file five complaints. Five complaints. Five separate different, complaints. Yeah, different. five different okay. people need to file a complaint against so one cop before they So it has to be look. five different people. So yeah. if you keep having a run-in with a certain cop and it's five different occasions, yep. that doesn't count. No, it does. He needs to have five complaints to get him here. Whether it's me, he did it five times to me, or five different people. Then okay. that internal affairs says, okay, let's investigate him. Until then, they run him up. That's why they do what they do. Uh, yeah. So people were like, so I got smart with the cop. Mm-hmm. He said, payback's a bitch. He said, no, I don't have your punk ass behind a motherfucking desk fucking with me. Mm-hmm. That's what I said to the cop. So my friends were musicians. They, they don't know that side of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so they're like, oh, payback. And they tease me, payback, payback. And then through the hood, everybody's like, hey, what's up, payback? And they kind of stuck. You know what I'm saying? So how was it like um, growing up in L.A.? in that era because you talking about that's the era with Ice Cube and all of that and you knew all of these people yeah 
How was it like growing up in that era? It it was uh, vicious. Was it, it really like straight out of Compton? Yeah, that's, a, that's it was that's worse than straight out of Compton because you had uh, the projects Watts Compton. Mm -hmm. Everybody would gang bang and shoot in Compton and Watts. Who lived in Compton and Watts? Most of them didn't have cars. So when they started selling dope, now they got cars. Now they want to come over to other parts of the city, Hollywood, Venice Beach, places like you know uh, that are tourist attractions, and then shoot it up, get the gang banging and set tripping on everybody. You know what I'm saying? So everywhere you went, I don't care where you went, turn into a shootout. And you running for your life to your car and trying to get out there, to, you know what I'm saying, uh, terrified. Because in the movie, I remember, the, to me, the worst part in the movie was when after the police came out and all of, all of the craziness started happening. So you were there during that time. Yeah, I mean, he, Ice Cube, who's my favorite rapper, one of the reasons is because the, 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 what he wrote is what I saw. The police tripping, or the dope, or the gang banging, or everything. And didn't they have riots and stuff like that? We had the yeah, we had the uh, Rodney King riots. Right. Tore a hole in L.A. And you saw all of that. I was in there. I mean, you I were trying to I was in there. So you were you were really in there. But yeah, when it went down, I was watching TV the whole the whole get down. The craziest part, I was watching the trial with Ice Cube. I was working with him that time, so when the trial was on, me and him watching. And then when they said, uh, not guilty, we left the studio, we cut the, the, the session short. So now I'm going home because they're going to tear this mug up. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got home, right, uh, Reginald Denny got beat up on, on camera. Mm -hmm. And it was my homeboys live right out from Florence, Normandy. Mm -hmm. So they're telling me, they running in the stores taking stuff. Man, you can run in these stores, ain't the police coming. Mm -hmm. And then they showed a video the news did of the city just on fire. Mm. How did you um, meet him? How did you end up working with him? With Ice Cube? Mm-hmm. So let me go back. So it's a long story to get to Ice Cube. That's I think is important because um, it was a valuable lesson I learned. Okay. So as a bass player, you want to have a bass line that everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like breakouts, boom, 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 right? So I'm like, I want to, I want to do something. I ain't related to nobody. I don't know nobody in the music industry. So um, I'm just like, you got a deal? You got a deal? You got a deal? Who, who? You know what I'm saying? I run into people wanting to the money to work, right? Where did your music come from, though? Was that your dad or somebody was also in the music? Why you ended up in the music? Uh, oh, you just loved the, the music? The school had a lot of musicians in it, and my mom was trying to keep me out the street because she saw where I was going. Oh, okay. And so, first it was piano, and I hated it. So I you were in Bootsy, sports? And then I saw, I went to bass. I was okay. in the sports. Okay. But we playing in the streets, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at the park, second half park. You know what I'm saying? Give yeah. it to all the homies at second half park off of Audubon and Adam. Uh -huh. But yeah, we And getting in playing, fights and everything getting else. Getting in fights. <laughs> get, you know what I'm saying? They gang banging, people initiating everybody. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? My dad... He was a lawyer. He was getting kids out of juvenile hall, so he knew all the gang, everything. Where you go to the side, the colors, everything. So he couldn't get that off of the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, so I was dating this girl. Her dad was an entertainment attorney, so I put got him in the corner and pressed him. Yo, I know you got somebody with a deal that you represent that you can hook me up with. He said, "Don't look for the money to work. Work and the money will come." So I don't understand that. So I'm still walking up on people who got a deal, who got a deal. And usually people who get deals have their own little click, their little crew, so you can't get in there. They already got a bass player, you know what mm -hmm, I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then I, I finally gave up, and I, I, I said, okay, I'm gonna work for free and see what, what happens. So I told my neighbor, dude named DJ Damu, he's well known in LA. And so I told him, I was like, yo, if anybody needs a bass on anything, I play on anything for free, you know, whatever. So That's couple, the key word, free. Free, so a couple of days later, uh, he said, I got somebody I want you to play. Base. They gave me the number, the address, all that. Went to the house. It's in the valley in L.A., nice part, up in the hills. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, pull up in the house, house and bomb. I'm like, damn, okay. This might end up with a check. <laughs> but then I go, in they, I go in the house. They got a little 8-track in the uh, bedroom. So I just, whatever, man. I played five songs. Um, and when I finished the five songs, somebody walked in the room behind me. So I'm sitting in a chair that doesn't swivel with my bass. So I can't turn around to... To see right. who it is. And so they like, oh man, play them songs. And they play one song, like, who's that? It was like, that's him. They was like, oh, you tight. They play another song, they play all five songs. Yeah, I was all him. He's like, yeah, you, see, you did that today. He said, yeah. He's like, man. He said, I just got off tour. He said, tour? I said, hmm. Oh, I was like, I want to turn around and look. Wait a minute. And he said, yeah, we started a little group. You know what I'm so saying? So you still didn't turn around and see who it I was? I didn't sit, turn around and see who it was. And he said, we started a group, man. You think you'll, you'll play bass for us? And I'm thinking, here we go with some more free stuff. 
turned around was Ron DeVoe. Wow. A new wow. edition. And he was starting BBD. How dope was that? So I was like, what? Yeah. And you knew exactly who he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was, yeah. He, he was Are dope. you serious? So I read, and then I started, oh, look at the plaques. And we're at his house. Then. And the bro- the guys I was playing for were his twin brothers. Oh, so this was his house you were at. You, yeah. did not re- you didn't look at plaques before. I'm thinking, who are balling? I said, they're going to eat some bread. And, 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 you know. Right. And so now I'm playing for BBD. And how long did you play for BBD? Just like a, maybe a year. Okay. Six months. They had a, a short run. They had do an album, then they do a tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. And so, um, but my older brother, Jay, had a friend, Booker. You guys heard of the Booker T and the MGs? Mm-mm. They have, they have a, if you heard the song, it's a classic instrumental song anyway. Yeah, I know his music. Son, I don't always know who. His son, Booker T. Jones III, was a big time engineer. He tracked uh, and mixed Brandy's first album, whatever. So mm-hmm, he was a man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so he saw me, he was doing the session. So he was like, yo, you, I know you was this good, you know what I'm saying? He said, if I paid you, it was back when we had pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I paid you, you better, you know, call me right back and right. be playing with me. Right. Man, talking like, like I'm a little kid, right? I'm like, all right, man, yeah, 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 all right, all right. He called me, next session was Ice Cube. Wow. Mm. So I'm walking in the studio, ain't knowing who I'm about to, I'm like, all right, man, what am I doing? And I actually walk in, huh? <laughs> Already, man. And to then make from it. there, he saw me playing. And what's the funniest thing is like, when you grew up, uh, like Bootsy Collins made me want to play the bass. So all that Parliament stuff I learned. At the time, they were trying to replay samples from Parliament. They weren't trying to sample it no more. They want people to replay it. So I knew all them songs. So they played it, can you play this? I'm thinking, flashlight? Like, I've been playing that for about 10 years, but I ain't saying nothing. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, yeah, let me see. <laughs> like this, they're like, damn, he figured it out like two seconds. I see a yeah, hit record, Mm-mm. I play it down five minutes, like, damn. So everybody was tripping. So then Q was like, man, I want you to play, um, you know, whatever I'm doing. So it was Lynch Mob, whatever, whatever. But me and Q been close in age, and um, I knew a lot of his people, his wife's people, his cousins, and everything like that. So we kept, we kept seeing each kept hanging with each other and in the studios that he recorded at because he was a man at the time everybody tried to record there so it'd be five or six rooms so people would see me hanging with him be like oh that's cute bass player and then Mm -hmm. i started playing with dubs and that got you a lot yeah yeah, everybody on the west coast at the time i played bass how long did you play for him uh from 93 on to now so you still playing with him? Yeah, I do. That's uh, awesome. I'm doing a theme song for his big three. Um, oh yeah, basketball league. Yeah. Yeah. How how was that transitioning over into that outside of what he's already been? Because to you, it's just music, right? Like, so you could play, you get into it. And you don't. It doesn't matter what is what's happening. You more into the 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 music, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't like it can be basketball. It can be a a a, a movie. It could be anything. But to you, it's all music. It's consistent. It's all music. Yep. Yeah, he just yep. came to Dallas the other day promoting that. Um, sure did. Yeah, yeah did. because I reached out because I wanted to get him on our podcast, and I reached out, but I, I was not it. very successful. That's he, all right. We're gonna keep Cube, working. Though. Cube is usually a year behind, ahead. Oh, his planning is a year. Like whatever he's gonna do next year around this time, he's already planned it out. Mm. So it's hard to catch him, and that's that's what kind of I, I I learned a lot from him because he's always real organized and structured. And so he plans everything out. So he's planned out for a whole year. Wow. That's I always good. a year ahead. I'll be like, man, I hit a date. I said, they got the date wrong. He said, nah. Like, uh, I got to do that next year. I'm like, man, you plan that ahead? You know? I love that. I can't plan a week ahead. I forget and that show up Me and all too. that stuff. See, man, I so. wish I could. No, I would be that person that would be just like him trying to plan. But when you have people around you who don't do the same thing, it's mm. very hard. Yeah. Yep. Don't yeah. look at me like that. What you looking at uh, me like that for? <laughs> yeah, so I started so playing with Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up playing for E4. I mean, anybody in um, on the West Coast. And then I started getting flown to New York. And I started playing for um, uh, Easy Mobi's brother, LG. So it was like Ill and Out Scratch, mm-hmm. and like a bunch of groups like that, that they would fly me out because. I'm cubes, quote unquote, yeah. bass player, whatever. But that's how I realize in this industry when you get to um, to work with a notoriety, uh, a very popular person, mm-hmm. it's a case where they label you because I was somebody else was telling me about Janet Jackson, piano player, 
And I'm like, that's how they know the person, by, right. not right. by their name. So this, this is such and such player. This is such right. and such. And that's, that's what helps them to get their gigs. Heck yeah. Yeah. I gave him uh, and didn't charge him. I gave him all the rights to the big three theme song. Mm. Just to say thank you for my association with him. Bless me from 93 on up. Wow. wow. You know what I'm saying? That's big. Yeah. The fact that you would be able to do that. You know, a lot of people get to going and they feel like it's themselves who made it right. happen. So that's big. You know, yeah. that's big oh, yeah. on character. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, I definitely get it. You know, because when people help us or have helped us back in the days or whatever, it's always mm. love and respect. Yeah, it's always love, man. Yeah. So, and he's never changed who he yeah. is. Same dude, let's play some bones. Nigga was had it. <laughs> no Hollywood. He's he seems the same real cool. dude. He's the same. He, seems he has real never, cool. he even dressed the same. T shirt, yeah, jeans, yeah, tennis yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing, it says a lot about you. To me, it it seems more like a brotherhood between you and him because for the main fact you've been working with him for such a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to find people that you can, you know, um, really get along with and they know exactly what you want and then they don't get too big headed about it mm -hmm. you know what i mean because mm -hmm. this business i'm sure you can find a lot of people who get big headed oh yeah i got some people i really want to put on blast right now but hey. you know what I'm <laughs> give it up to god right now let me ask you this so playing um uh, uh producing um mm -hmm. uh the song on soul plane uh, mm -hmm. the gin and juice um what how did that transpire you know like how did you guys, uh, how did they, how did you come into that? Mm -hmm. um, again, work, uh, do the work and the money will come. The music supervisor, she passed, Clara McCory, was uh, an intern doing something. I played bass on um, Blank Man with uh, Damian Wayans. And so, she ended up trying to go in to be a, a music supervisor. She was working on a movie and she needed some music, but she didn't have a budget yet. So I worked with her. And so she remembered that. And so uh, they had a meeting for Soul Plane to get Gin and Juice instrumental from Death Row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Death Row waited forever to give a response, yes or no, or a price. When he came back with the price, it was way too much. So she knows I know how to do that kind of music, whatever. She called me before, I need something that sounds like such and such but she needed an exact copy and she knew I could do it. So she called me before she called anybody. Wow. I did it right on the spot, e emailed it to her next thing in the morning, she checked it and they placed it and the director said, you know, gave it the green light. Wow. You That's have good. an air for stuff. For yeah, music. but it's, you know what? Being accountable and punctual um, goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Wow. They know they can count on me. If I say I don't do it, I won't do it. If I, say, do it. if I say I can't do it, but then I realize I can't, I won't say that too. I ain't gonna BS you, I ain't gonna play with you, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. What is your weakness where the business is concerned? Whoa, let's expose him. The weakness? Yes, your weakness. Everybody has a flaw. Everybody has a weakness. You have your strength and you have your weakness. Well, what is your weakness? Um, we already know that your strength is you're accountable. Yeah, I had um my my weakness was trusting. Wow. And um I got into it, it was an act that I was there in Inglewood, give you a hint of what I'm talking about without saying his name, in Inglewood, when he was with a group. I was working with the group, grew up around the dudes, everything. Then he started working with Ice Cube. I'm working with Ice Cube, so I'm with him every day. Ice Cube just interviewed me and him in the back, sitting around talking, doing wow. whatever, right? And so then, he did a single, I did a single, I played bass all over it, right? Whole album, and then, um, he got kind of big, then he started signing groups from Inglewood. So he used to have me produce them and stuff like that. He's cutting the checks. But then I beat, I did a song for his album, and he, he forgot to pay that one. Wow. Mm. Then he was playing games. Call me tomorrow, I'll call me tomorrow. Page me this time. Page I know time. who it is, just by the he way you expressed it. He kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing And I was like, hey, homie, you know what I'm saying? So then, uh, uh, yeah, it, just, it got real bad. Then the album came out. And he ain't knowing that he got people that want to take him out. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're getting at me, they think they know him. And they almost threatening my life or want to pay me a whole bunch of money. I thought about it, so I'm sitting there <laughs> contemplating it. I mean, my, uh, my manager's office is a white guy named uh, Evan Forrester, so I, but he knows everybody, Evan does. So I'm sitting there contemplating, he said, what, what you doing? And he knows 
the people that are after Mac-10, he knows they're serious people. I ain't gonna say their name. Mm -hmm. Should goes to them when he has a problem. Oh, oh wow! So that dude got at me. I'm like, I was thinking, oh, I can use that money. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't know. Cause what's wrong? I was thinking about. It. I'm, but I'm sweating. I'm like, like this, man. He said, what's, what's going on? I said, man, I got a decision I got to make, man. And I told him the situation. He said, no, man, that's not how you do it, dog. You're, you're grown. You got to leave that street shit alone. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. He said, this is how you do it. He called Priority Records, knew the president, called him, said, hey, you got a song out there without a contract or a check or wow. with him out, whatever. And we can do a cease and assist right now. Exactly. Unless we get paid. And so he called the artist. The artist said, I'll be there in a half an hour with the check. <laughs> they faxed the contract and told me to be up there in a half an hour to have everything. I showed up. Signed my check, signed the contract, and got up out of there. Shout out to Evan. I just never did, Shout never out. did business yeah, with him. Yeah, Evan say, say like, because I know out to Evan. My, da my dad's an attorney. Of course. And so I know that accomplices do jail time, too. Right. So they're like, how'd you find this house? You know what I'm saying? He told me. Boom. He, there I go. You know what I'm saying? I get locked up, too. So I, right. I avoid it. I mean, it's a lot of street stuff out there, so. Man. I can imagine, especially Trusting. when you're raised around that. It's yeah. so easy to just get that done but you yeah. think we cool me and you cool we hang out i see you about a month or two i'm gonna work with this show you blow up all that hey, hey payback i need this theme song for my show whatever oh, all right cool cool i'm usually gotta do like a dope deal where the money at you know what i'm saying you got i see the money okay here's a track the switch you know what i'm saying so i'm thinking you the homie here man you know what i'm saying okay i'll pay you tomorrow all right pay me tomorrow and then i don't hear from you and then you're playing games on the phone. Oh, call me at 1 o'clock. And then you don't answer. Call me tomorrow. I pay you 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? After a while, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fool. You know what I'm saying? So, so that, that was, but that was a learning lesson. And I just, I just, everybody, when I do business, I don't care if it's my mama, my brother, anybody, what? You know what I'm saying? You want to do something? All right, here's the contract. and the contract and the check. Yeah. All I'll move. I don't care who you are. So, so when, you, when you said that, you kind of gave away who it was. Was this during the time when all that when when they were all working together? As far as yep. So I, I figured that much, you know, because mm -hmm. I remember that era. It's, that was a, we, that was a good him, era, man. Me and him made a <laughs> we cool right now, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't even want to put his name on. Right. There. Otherwise, I put his name on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, but that's love. good. But you don't do any work with him anymore. Yeah, you uh, will. indirectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we, yeah. We, we talked about doing some stuff. Yeah. I, okay. Um, but you just gonna make sure the contract and everything signed first. Oh yeah, I ain't play. Well, I don't play with nobody. I don't care. No, he, he helped. He really helped you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, it was a learning lesson. That's what just, I'm saying. It helped you. Help stuff. Yeah. If I had problems, there's people I can go to, like the guy who wanted to get, at, you know, what I'm saying, and I can get stuff done. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, you know, what I'm saying. I said, yeah, let me just go corporate, and I got a my lawyer is a, is a beast. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm cool. That's good. That. So I, I grew up. You know how could you, um, like, if you, if someone was like you back in the days. Mm -hmm. California, I remember being in Texas. Bass player coming up, he's probably about 15 years old, trying to figure out how to get out there. How would you advise him to move? What should he do? Uh, first, you gotta be good at what you do, because I, I get down. Okay. But when you just started, did you but, know you got down? Or yeah. it took time oh, yeah. to learn what? it? Hell yeah. I mean, I, by, by this time, I've been playing for eight years, but I was playing at jam sessions at clubs. So okay. it's kind of like you're battling. It's like a freestyle. You go to a freestyle club, battling everybody like Eminem or something like that. With a bass? With eight miles. Really? Oh, yeah. Everybody from, the, yeah, that, that, that. I didn't Eminem. know that y'all yeah. had battles like that. They have freestyles. You, you're not really saying, oh, I'm better than him, but you want somebody to call you. Mm -hmm. All right, next, uh, hey, payback's here. Man, come, hey, payback about to get down. Now, if you ain't, if you whack, you know what I'm saying, they'll look past you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they would call me up. So I, I, like the dudes I was playing for, I'm like them. I'm like an Ice Cube. I'm like a Dr. Dre. I'm not some dude with some weird haircut, wearing dupe, you know, uh, tights with, with, you know what I'm saying, pink mm -hmm. shirts, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm wearing khakis just like they wearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look just like one of them walking in. What's happening? I was from the red team. What's happening, black? You know what I'm saying? It was Crips. <laughs> and I, but I was, just like them, so it made it easy, eat relatable for me mm -hmm. to, to even hang with them, let alone you know play bass. So then uh, I listen to what they listen to. So what they're expecting me to play is what I what I expect to play. Mm -hmm. So we're on the same page, and I like describing something. And I'm like, no, I just read music. I don't know Parliament. Who's that? You know what I mean? Like I know you name the song. Oh yeah. 
But you didn't know as a kid that that's who you wanted to play for. No. It just happened. It, it, it just happened. I didn't target anybody. I just so wanted to play I, on something. So advising a kid, because what you're just saying is almost like they need to like focus on somebody and you know study them and be like, okay, set your goal, really, and say, this is who I want to play for um, and make it happen. I would say uh, whatever genre of music you're going for, like I was going for R&B, rap, whatever, learn that music well and also work first and let the money come. Work for free. Work, play on everything you can play on because it'll lead to something. Wow. I don't care who it was. I was in a bedroom. Somebody's bedroom with a little real to real A track. You know what I'm saying? Like the cheapest thing you can mm -hmm. buy to record on something and it led me to BBD. Mm -hmm. well, being a being a native from um, Los Angeles, yeah, um, South Central, and 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 yeah. being being that native and then coming to Vegas and living, mm -hmm. how big was that? I mean, like like you, you out here, you I mean you out here shooting craps. What you, what are you doing? I mean, ah. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man, let that alone, man. What, <laughs> are P.O. listening? No, <laughs> nah, I, um, so I had a. Doing music, I started producing music, I started licensing stuff like um, Gin and Juice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every little black movie, I got a song in. Wow. Mm. John's Family Vacation, yep, and yep, Blues, yep. you know what I'm saying, whatever. That's dope, man. So, um, I also uh, wanted to get into movies. Okay. Um, and so, I felt like I had to, f I, I know a lot of people in Hollywood with different, you know, different backgrounds, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so they were telling me that if I look, find a, something, a void in something, this, and, and exploit it. And so the Fast and Furious was like the street racing, but they exploited it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people didn't really know about it with the mainstream like that. And so um, I'm giving up something, but that's, I don't care right about now. <laughs> Blacks, Give it brothers, all brothers riding Harleys. There's no TV show. There's no movie. There's no nothing. Mm -hmm. Close we came to was Biker Boys, but I was And bikes. I loved it. Right, but I went in the thirty grams yeah. and the signs. Yeah. And right, which you know I what like. Saying? Yeah, I like. I don't both. like Harleys. I like. I, like both. I love. I like they call both. them crotch rockets. Up yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We just call it bikes in Jamaica. Yeah, they're, they're like death, death traps. Harleys, you ride like a Cadillac. That's cool. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Sport bike, you in between cars, popping exactly. wheelies, and hitting corners and dipping and in those. Uh, you get case, uh, <laughs> I got a scar from here to here from, from a sport bike. Wow. Uh -huh. I, I got a Ducati, but I still, you know what I'm saying. I, I like Harley stuff. So wow. I feel safer. You get tempted. Ooh, I can do 160. You're gonna 50. Like, oh. How many people actually wreck off a Harley? Not many. They, they do, do but rare. It's, it's rare. You gotta be an idiot or a car was doing something extremely stupid. Mm -hmm. Sport bikes, you get tempted with the speed and you're going between cars and then, ooh, I did the such and such and 180, I flew past. You get caught up in all that. Let me ask I you remember that. one time oh, um, back home in Jamaica, right? In Jamaica, you have rocks everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And we driving down the street, and this guy overtook us. But in Jamaica, they'll overtake you anywhere. So right. he overtook he uh, here and then went on a soft shoulder, which rocks were there. Mm. Hit a rock and a bike, and him went like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're crashing a heartbeat. If you hang around bike clubs, watched all the members, you'll see one missing the next meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where was such as that? Oh man, they fell and they hit a fire hydrant and they in the hospital. You'll see, you start seeing the, 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 the group smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller. Let harder. me ask you this, Paul, because I gotta ask you this. What? Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Mm -hmm. Top three of all time? Of all time, Any dead genre. or alive. Any dead or genre. alive. Any, Any genre. genre. Number Michael one. Jackson. Okay. Michael Jackson, we get that, that all the time. He killing the game. We had we had a guy. He started as a kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. but people say that Chris Brown better than him. Shout oh, out to Trick stop. Daddy. No, 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 no. Hold on. Not people. A person said Trick Daddy. Al D three hundred. They said too? Chris Brown was Chris Brown came from Mike, so it's kind I of know that. Chris Brown tight. I'll give it to Chris Brown. He can dance, he can sing. He's probably one of the tightest dudes today. Yeah. He's the Michael Jackson of today. Mm -hmm. But if you put Michael Jackson and him on the same stage at their heyday, I don't think so, man. So who's your number I love two? Chris Brown, though. So who's Me your too. Two? Prince. Of okay. course. The only reason I say Mike before Prince, they're kind of neck and neck, is because Mike was starting, he was a kid. Mike came number saying? one over Prince to Right, me but Prince day. plays all the instruments. He's more, he's, to me, he's way more talented, yeah. but Mike's voice was so unique. They mm -hmm. just took him to whenever. He could be 100 million. And number 100. three. 
Number three of all time? That's hard. Because then I'm thinking about rappers. The, the most influential that serious, changed my life. Are you serious, bro? It's like I'm looking for him to say that Are you name. serious? I'm sitting there thinking like, you crazy here? No, no, let him say I'm, it. All right, all right. Should I think about Luther or something? No, no, no. Keep no. Who's your number Pat three? Bell. That's your number three? I could say Pat LaBelle. No, who's your number three? I cannot believe this. No, hold on. Who's your want to say? Teddy Pendergrass? No. no. Who's your number three? I want him to say it. Don't, don't say anything. I know what you're thinking, but who's your number I three? I ain't going to say what y'all thinking. Okay, so who's your number three? Uh, uh, number three. I ain't gonna say Beyonce. Y'all looking at me crazy. That nobody, nobody sad. young. Nobody young. They gotta be. Uh, I don't know. I, I like. Um, I say Pally Bell. I got throw a woman in the, in the mix. Pally Bell. Mm. Yeah. Pally Bell. Pally Bell. You know who's thinking? You know who he's thinking? What Ice Cube? Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna go there, but Chuck D then Ice Cube. Chuck D dress on because people say I look like him, and I always been wearing this, this P hat. So did he for Public Enemy, but I'm gonna wear mine for Payback, Mm-mm. the um, Pittsburgh Pirate hat. Um, but I wore the medallion too. Uh huh. And then older brothers would hit me up. Hey, you know we invented uh, history. You know we invented. You know what I'm saying? There was always some jewel they dropped on me. Yeah. And so that kind of got me out of wanting to hurt other blacks. And, and and educate them and love them and then realize that we need to stop all that because right now I say cuz blood I don't care who I'm hey well all right cuz oh you still talking, doing it you but still no 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 uh, I might be talking to somebody who's a crypt that's grown mm-hmm. right but I'll say cuz people who are bloods for some reason they take that to their death you say are you cu- serious? You say cuss to an old blood dude, 50, 50, 60 years old. He'd be like, what you say to me? Bro, you know I mean? are you oh serious? Oh, my God. Like so I go. How old are you? I'm 52, man. Or do you believe that? Okay, so that's a good subject. I'd I like that. all that. I want to talk about when it. I was a kid, man. So you're, you're 52. 52, man. And you're you guys probably. still banging? 52. There's 52s out there right now that are still banging. Red rags will kill you for the set and all that. But and they not you, and get mad at me, and you still talk to him, and get mad at me if I say "cuz." What you say? Because you grew up with him. Yeah, well, this ain't they bloods. But when okay, because if we I talk to Crips, if I talk to OG Crips who really still in all that, and I say, "All right, blood," they be like, "What?" But what when we go down to LA, right? Because you know, back in the days when you watch TV, you see everybody's blue or red bloods or Crips, whatever. It's not like that anymore. No, nah. bloods. Let me tell you, when um. In the 80s, during the straight out of Compton era, mm-hmm. the late 80s, 90s, the, um, it'd be 30 crips from, from uh, Nickerson's or something, like Projects and Watts would come to Westwood. That's like the West Side. UCLA is in, West, is in Westwood. And come up to that whole little shopping area where the movie theater is at and get to fight anybody with red, with red on and just fucking shit up, shooting mm-hmm. shit. She was in the news. It was off the chain, man. And so I, I don't get it, man. I think everything was, in every it, season, and when you it ain't the same, dude, it ain't the same. But they still doing it. And then, dude, we and then, are we are older, <laughs> and and not only are we older, we have the next generation to think about when, yep. because we are wiser. They trying, so trying to, get trying them to up, understand. They trying to get them up into the game. You know the you know the the the, the years I never trip off until I look back. You know when they really go the hardest as a gang member, fifteen. I, I get it. I could believe that. 15, the ones that j- you got to initiate, you got to shoot somebody and jump do whatever. Man. He all about the... Wo- That's the hardest motherfucker at 15. Mm-hmm. So around 17, Pops, I used to, um, you know what I'm saying, partake, you know what I'm saying, with mm-hmm. the attire and shit, but I couldn't do the crib. So I had a backpack, no books in it, and I got all my little chucks and all my little gangbang shit, and I go to school and change mm-hmm. clothes, right? And then before I leave the school, I change back and then come home with the square shit on. One day I was tired. Came home, <laughs> forgot to change, fell asleep on the couch. And Pops came home. Like I said, he represented he kids. He tore, t- tore your tail up. What? <laughs> so, yeah, he beat me the hell up. He picked me up and threw me against the wall, right from here to that wall, about five, ten feet. I hit the wall right in the middle of the wall. I didn't fall to the ground. I hit the middle of the wall. Like in and the it, movies. And like in the movies. It, like it was CGI or something. And he said, um, I said, man, I can't get out the jump, the, the gang because they'll... Or I can't stop wearing this because they'll, they'll, they'll jump me. Yeah, right. He said, you either fight me or you're going to fight them. What you going to do? I'm thinking, none of them throw me five feet in the air like that. They ain't pick me off the ground. I'm fighting all them. So I went back to school and like, man, I can't I can't do this no more. And then he and told me. And they let me, you out? I, I, I was down to fight. Did you fight? 
No, I didn't fight to get out. That, but this is crazy shit. So after he threw me on the ground, I'm crying and everything. He told me this shit, and it worked. And it, and it worked for me to, to mentally get out of it, and whoever I talked to, it worked for them too. Wow. What is, what is, so, yeah, so what he, is that? So he told me Bloods and Crips were like the Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is true or not, right? He said the Crips stand for community of resourceful, independent people, and the Bloods were black leaders of our own destiny. And that we were like the Black Panthers. We provide jobs and protection from police and food if you need it and shelter, whatever, you know. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, we all used to stick together. He said, y'all got infiltrated by J. Edgar Hoover. That's what he told me. Wow. And y'all went to jail. We went to jail just to the police, just a bunch of black people. So they start fighting. Oh, you snitched on us. What are they fighting? Um, and so they said, okay, the people that we bust from the blood, whatever, that are blood, put them in red jumpsuits. And then the cats put them in blue jumpsuits. So you wear bandanas and all with your colors on. So when you get out of jail, you got Crips. Like you got 18 streets of Crips, Rolling 20s, where I was from, it's Bloods, Rolling 30 Crip, 40 Hustler, five dudes brand us Bloods, 60 Crip. So it's just, if you look at a street and a map, it's, it, they're all, it's not like a whole group of Crips here and Bloods there. They're like every couple blocks is a different set. And so that's why you got different sets, because they got out of jail and that's where they lived and then they, they were mad because whatever, you know, going to jail destroys your family. So now you're mad. So now you want to beat up people and then it turned to escalated shooting. So now the Crips and Bloods are at each other. That's so crazy because division, that's yep. just really what Divide I'm seeing. Is that if you put, you see blacks fighting against blacks right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we mm -hmm. always ask, how can we bring our communities together? Why are we fighting against each other? Even some of these OG Crips or Bloods or whatever. Yeah, you have a lot of these because it's everywhere. It's not only in L.A. All, that's spread all over mm -hmm. the world right now. Yep. And the most active people in these um, organizations are the kids. Yep. And those are the ones the who are getting. Yep. And those are the ones who are getting killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, the older ones are sitting back chilling because they did their time and they're like, yeah, you know, whatever. No, they got a little. Now those little dudes are running do whatever crime the OG won't do. Right. Hey man, go such such as over there balling. You know. Get his dope and his guns and bring it back to me. Uh, but before, let me let me ask this. When, okay. when I lived in Vegas, there was banging out here as well. Mm -hmm, it's so it still it still goes down, right? I got gang banged on in New York. Wow, mm. really? You got what? and they don't even know how to gang bang, which is funny. <laughs> hell, <laughs> That's but crazy. They bloods, you know what I'm saying? I, I think it was a rapper Noriega. His little people were bloods, and their thing is, um, do you drink milk? And depending on that answer, you're either a cripple or a blood. Really? So. Reveal that to me, because I know nothing about that. So in L.A., you say, what set you from? And you say, nigga, this is 30-something crip, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, BPS, Black, Stone Bloods, mm -hmm. whatever, right? You say, you say you're set. So um, being funny, they, they flew me out there. Because how the milk come into this? I don't know. I have no idea. So look, they flew me out there to play <laughs> bass, and I'm, you know, from South Central, blah, blah, blah. He fucks with all the gangster rappers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... They expected me, oh, he's from South Central. And I think one of them asked me, Nori asked me, were you in a gang? I said, yeah, kind of, with the Bloods. So I guess he told his boys, oh, we got an OG Blood from West Coast coming out of here. So I get to the studio, and it's about 20, 30 kids, 16, 17, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm late 20s, okay, maybe 30. So I'm sitting in there chilling, and then so one of them walks up on me, all red rag, hat sideways, the whole gang banged out, he's kind of, Side, but he got to be 15, 17, whatever, right? He walks up on me, he's like, what's happening, homie? I was like, what's up? Like, little man, little boy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, you drink milk? Well, serious as a motherfucker. You drink milk? I was like, I looked around like, is he joking? Yeah, with my cereal? He said, no, nah, homie. Do you drink milk? He, he balled up like he about to fire him. He, he set up and everything. I said, what are you doing? They said, he trying to find out if you were blood or not. I said, nah, I'm a blood, homie. I said, you trying to gang bang? I said, that what you trying to do? I started laughing at me. Isn't it? This fool right, this little motherfucker trying to gang bang? That's what you're doing to me? I said, no, nah, nigga, this is what you do, homie. That's what set you from, nigga. And if you say the wrong thing, they bomb on, you bomb on him. He said, oh, shit, okay, all right. I said, what the fuck is this milk shit about? <laughs> y'all got it wrong. Y'all ain't y'all need to read, read the uh, gangbang book one on one, you know what I'm saying? It's black and yellow. How the gangbang How crazy them. is it that that wow. out of your community uh, uh streams all of these people from L LA calls the whole world 
to be Crips yeah. and Bloods right. in Sacramento? every neighborhood. No, Texas. It's yeah. it's everywhere. Like uh, Louisiana, good. Shreveport. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, any it, when you go up to St. Louis, yeah. it's everywhere. Y'all really permeated the world with yeah. that. And 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 I say y'all because you guys no, neighborhoods. You're right. These guys don't even rep their neighborhood. They just rep the color. Like yep. it was about a neighborhood as you spoke. Yep. But down there, they was doing it wrong. Like it, it's like they just. I'm, I like that color and I'm rocking with it and I'll kill you mm -hmm. behind it. You know, you know what? I, I realized that it was, it's, it's like the bringing it to the music was super bad. Because remember Dolores Tucker, everybody was like mm -hmm. smashing the CDs back in the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it was yeah. Terrible and this and the other. Like, oh, we just trying to, yeah, we just trying to, you know, uh, represent our neighbor, just what we see, change what we see. We, we rap about something different. And then I went to an uh, outskirts of Chicago. And went to it's a music festival, and um, uh, there's three, four white boys walked up looking like NWA cop, like a, like it was Halloween and shit. They had the Raider hats on, and uh, the big black jacket and the swap meet chat khakis and t-shirt and uh, the all white. Uh, I forgot the, the tennis shoes they wear, but looking like NWA. Mm -hmm. Like you from Cali? Yeah, you know where Compton is. I'm like, yeah. Do we? Do we? How do we look? <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What the fuck is, is this Halloween or something?" She said, "No, no, we trying to be, we trying to be gangsters. Do, 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 are we wearing it right? Or corny ass white, corny ass little white boy, wow. right? Corny ass. I'm like, I, is, are we wearing it right, dude? You know what I'm saying? It's like, no. You, I said, "Damn, so you got them on that." Wow. wow. I was like, oh, that's what they're talking about. We're influencing places that they yeah. have no idea about gangs or being hard or what to look like or even talk like. And now they're watching these videos and want to be like them. But I got to do some research to see if what your dad said was true. Because if that's the case, that right there is what all of the Bloods and Crips supposed to be passing on to all right. the different generations. I speak on it when so I let can. let them know but really know where it came from. Because people are repping something that they don't know nothing about, really, if that's yep. the case. Yeah. Wow. They, because they, some, some uh, OGs tell me that Bloods came from Chicago. Mm -hmm. The black disciples started the blood, blah blah blah. But you know, you have all these different things. Cause somebody did a um, uh, a documentary in Dallas not mm -hmm. too long ago, talking about um, Bloods and Crips and where it started, mm -hmm. and it, it came to Fort Worth and all of that stuff. What? And yeah, yeah it's, because it's a lot of killing it's and everywhere. all of that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. they did a documentary on that. But wow. um, what I you have on is that Lokes? You have on? Yeah, I got on Lokes. These, That's these. also a thing of. California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying. What's just, that about? But this, the, I'm wearing these as a favor to one of my friends. Um, I always promote black stuff, so I got Already. my brother stuff. That's man, black. These, they're, they're positive. Hey, I positive like world. Stop yeah. playing. Yeah, I love yeah. positive world. And so uh, this guy named Percy works side by side with Snoop Dogg. Wow. Okay. So I don't know if you can. I don't know what side it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, see it. the paws or whatever. Yeah, yeah I see the so paws. So this is their brand of. Sunglasses. Wow! Okay, so you always like giving those. back. I'm always promoting. You always giving back. So you showing love. Who else gonna do it? You so know is, that, real. is that so? Is that Lokes or is that his his brand? So these are these are the, his brand. No, Lokes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, because I know the style, 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 style. Lokes. The style is Lokes. Right. Okay. Check it, man. More. Check oh, it, yeah, man. It's just a little bit different. But one, I do want to touch on something before we get off. Is um oh sorry, sorry. um you were telling me earlier about the movement to help. Bring awareness to diabetes. Tell me about yeah. that. Um, in 2005, I had built a studio in my backyard, and people would just like brothers would come hang out every day before they went doing whatever. <clears throat> we were all complaining about the same things, but I was the only one that had health insurance. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because um, a lot of people who are self employed don't have health insurance. Right. It costs like $700 a month. Mm -hmm. So I had health insurance, and that's like, I just went got a, a, a physical just because I'm paying all this money. You know, what can I do? You know what I'm saying? And I go get a physical. So I got a physical, find out I had diabetes. Wow. And so I told seven brothers to come complain about the same symptoms. I said, those are diabetic symptoms. You're feeding numb, you're tired, you piss like crazy, and then you drink like crazy, and then you piss like crazy, and then you drink like crazy, right? And so it was like- So it wasn't a weight gain, it wasn't um, it, it was, the lightheaded, it, it wasn't was, any of it us. Was, it was a weight gain, I gained 50 pounds, but slowly by gaining 50 pounds, but all, all of those things lead to, but the symptoms that we were all talking about. So I said, I told them, y'all need to get checked out. If y'all got diabetes, man, you probably gonna, you know, have a diabetic coma. Right. Let me, let me tell you the story when I found out. So I went on a Friday to get a physical 
The doctor, he, the doctor said, oh, we'll let you know in two weeks what it's going to be. The doctor went in on Sunday for some whatever reason and found out my sugars was like five, six hundred. Mm, uh, that's crazy. I didn't know what that meant. Mm. Yeah, I'm ignorant to all diabetes, right, at mm-hmm. that time. So he called me. I was at uh, Kennetown Park for my L.A. folks at a barbecue. It took me about an hour and a half to park on a Sunday. So I just parked, smelling the barbecue. I'm looking at the, uh, the barbecue pit. I'm walking toward it, and the doctor called. He's like, look, where you at? I'm like, who's this? This is Dr. Sutton. said, where you at right now? I said, man, I'm at a barbecue. Let me call you back. He was like, no. I said, man, why not? He said, because you're going to have a diabetic coma. What? I heard it was coma. <laughs> what? He said, yeah, man, I just checked your results. You know, I don't come in on the weekend. Go to, what's the nearest pharmacy? It was one on Slauson and over here. Go to wow. right now. My wife is with me. She's walking to the place. I'm going to go. And she was like, look like, why? Like, I was like, I'm about to have a diabetic coma. We hopped in my car like the Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> she stood across the hood. We took, pushed out. So anyway, that when I tell brothers, the crap out of you. yeah, so I told her, I said, man, y'all might have a diabetic coma. So all seven went to get checked out for diabetes. Six of them came back and they were wow. diabetic. Wow. And they wouldn't have went to the hospital, period, or a doctor or whatever, if I wouldn't have said nothing, right? So I felt like I helped save them, you know what I'm saying? And so But let me, last let, year, let me cut you one second on that. Okay. Um, how much is um, having too much sugar in your diet growing up? have to do with diabetes um if you if you're not working out that's one mm-hmm. you're eating we eat a lot of sugar that we don't know we eat kool-aid it's got a cup mm-hmm. of sugar in it we eat macaroni and cheese the mac the noodles turn into sugar we eat spaghetti the anything white turn into turns sugar. into sugar breaks yeah sugar. we eat burgers all day Rice, long that, everything hot mm-hmm. dogs all that sugar right mm-hmm. Then we eat mad candy. Grandma give you candy growing up. You just eat Mac, Ding Dongs, Twinkies, Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. We eat, it's sugar diet. All, we, that's all we eat is sugar. You know what I'm saying? So you don't work out. You don't, after, after a while, it's like beating your body up. And you put sugar in the water, it turns into syrup, right? So mm-hmm. your blood's supposed to be real thin, thinner than water for your heart to hit, boom, and your blood to go all the way down to your feet, come back up. So when it gets thick like syrup, it's slow. Now all your organs get strained. Now you're tired. Now you don't want to work out. Now you're getting fat. Now you're sleepy all the time. And then, um, you know, your body's looking for nutrients, looking for something. So you drink water, but then you, you drink so much, you get full, but then you want to pee, and you pee it all out to you empty on eating. Then you got to drink again because you're thirsty again. It's, so all these symptoms, right? Um, and so I got diabetes. Most diabetics, after a while, you get fatigued because you're surrounded by... Um, non-diabetics mm. or people who have bad eating habits, mm. unhealthy eating habits. So if I go to dinner with a nice young lady, you know what I'm saying, she might order cheesecake um, for dessert. I ain't supposed to have it, but you know what I'm saying, it looks all good. They put two spoons on the plate. You, go, <laughs> you can get your sugar-free one. <laughs> yeah, but if you with people who are not diabetic or, or don't know they're diabetic, they're not getting the sugar-free. Okay. <laughs> So that kind of environment. Then the cigars came out. So I'm smoking and drinking, not really tripping. What does that have to do with diabetes, though? It kills you. The smoking clogs your blood. You know what I'm okay. saying? So now your organs are struggling. Now your heart's struggling. That's how you have strokes and heart attacks and all okay. that stuff, right? It affects your eyes. Your eyes have blood that's supposed to just flow through them. They get swollen up and clogged up. Your eye, you start, your eye cycle bad. It's nothing with diabetes. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. And so last year... When my mom died in 2018, I was mm-hmm. stressed. I was stressed out behind her, really to take care of myself, and trying to cope with the stress of her dying. I'm drinking, and smoking, and partying, and working late, and not getting no rest, not doing nothing, doing the opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing. So now I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going, getting the, the out the results of, of that bad diet and the bad habits. Mm-hmm. So last year. Uh, I had gotten an infection. Like when you your diabetes is bad, your feet are numb. So you can step on a nail or get bit by a spider and not know it. So you had step an infection. On something. I had an infection. Shit went out of control. So now I had got two of my toes amputated. Wow. Mm-hmm. Actually amputated. At the same time, now I'm going to our doctors to get all fully checked out. I had veins growing crazy about to cross my retina. Wow. They do that. They can't even laser it because they might hit your retina. You're wow. blunt, you go blind. That's why people Tina. diabetic go blind. Yep, or the, or the eyesight get bad. And then mm-hmm. um, I started having heart problems. I started fainting. Wow. I'm, I walked from the elevators here. I'm out of fainting by the time I got to that door. Wow. 
Um, and so because my dad had diabetes and mm -hmm. he ended up having a quadruple bypass mm -hmm. after years. Yep. Because the doctor would always tell him, "You got to walk. You got to walk. You got to take some weight off." Mm -hmm. And he did. And even after the quadruple bypass, he probably lasted about four more years. Mm. And um, eventually, God bless you, you know, child. yeah. But see, that's so what I'm doing right now. There's a website called www.checkyourrisk.org. There are eight questions that you answer: your height, your weight. You don't have to put your name and email address, none of that stuff. It's all about you saving your life, basically. Mm -hmm. And there are eight questions you answer, and then evaluate if you're at risk for diabetes, and then go get checked out. And the resources there if you have insurance. But then, okay, so how? Because I've heard some people say, well. If you eat right and you don't do it and you work out, take your weight off, you can get off all this medicine. Mm, yeah, if you're pre-diabetic, yes. If you're pre that you're almost there. So if you're number two, like like you are. Number um, two is a lifestyle, but you can be, pre-diabetic is almost being type two, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're type, type one, two, you're born like that. Type two is lifestyle. So type two, you can't just, work out and eat right and get off the medicine. If you're pre-diabetic, if you're almost fully diabetic, mm -hmm. you can reverse it. That's why I'm trying to get okay. everybody to go get checked out now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because brothers, we don't go to the hospital unless we have to. We don't go for checkups and, you know, whatever, like we're supposed to. That's Even true. when we have diabetes, we go, when I found out, because I was doing it too, I go to the doctor just to extend my, my medicine prescription. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go get the full blood work, check out my feet, my eyes, da, da, da. I just go... And then you go to CVS, pay a hundred dollars, and say, "Hey, man, you know, I was on, uh, I was taking this medication this many times a day. Okay, they write a prescription here, and you go fill it. You got another six months, but you're mm -hmm. not getting checked out. Mm -hmm. So your your feet can be getting numb, your eyes can be going bad, your heart can be going bad. You're not getting that checked out. So the campaign right now, I'm getting a lot of friends and family and stuff, uh, just saying, check your wrist and go get checked out. Either get checked out on your own or if you're too lazy to do that, you don't know. Because a lot of times we don't know, or we know something's wrong, but we don't know what it is, and we won't get it checked out until we have to. You pass, all oh, you passed out, all oh, you was diabetic. You know, a lot of people die like that. Like I have friends die and they sleep. Wow, man, we appreciate forty-five you. years old. Are you? You got yeah, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> we appreciate you, man, uh, uh, for hanging out with us, man. On man, y'all cool, you know, man. Y'all cool. Hey, man. Anytime we come to say. Vegas, we coming back in six months. We doing another interview. Check it, man. We gonna I'm be right more, here. I might have some more to talk about. Man. Hey, I'm man. Active out here, man. It's about to be my city. You know? <laughs> Say, man, we love you, man. We thank Ladies, you for man. coming on the show, man. Hey, man, it was a pl my pleasure. My pleasure. Man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Awesome. <laughs>